In every generation dawns a most auspicious day. The day when four elevens meet and sleepers have their say. The day to which the fickle sands of time and tide have run. The day when fate and prophecy reveal the chosen one. was 11 years old. That's to say, at precisely 11 that evening, the 11th day of the 11th month, she would be 11 years old. Go on, blew them out. A cause for celebration, you'd think. But not for Marnie. Uh, you gonna open your presents? Sad to say, her mother died barely two months before, and Marnie had not yet shed a tear. Treats and birthday cakes were all very well, but they wouldn't bring her mother back. Nor help the lassie learn to grieve. No, what she needed was something different. Something to better suit her destiny. Mind if you take a look, Marnie? Oh, come on. You never know. I might find a first edition. Her destiny and the deep dark destiny of another.
he knows your birthday. Come on. Birthday girl. Guess that's it for another year. It's hard, I know. It's mom. So do I, sweetie. Can I take a look at your wee friends? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't want to meet him in a dark night. Arr. Oh, he's got a funny face. Yeah, Mum would have liked this one, wouldn't she? Come on. It's time for bed. Yeah. Come on. In you get. Night, night, Marnie. Night, Dad. Sleep well. Toys in a shoebox that spring to life unbidden? Great enchanters with debts to be repaid? This is a strange world indeed. A world out of kilter, where science tramples morality, where knowledge knows neither wisdom nor restraint, and where a great and powerful man, a man of destiny, a scholar, a mystic, a prophet <laughs> will find that he's no wiser than a wee lassie who's just 11 years old. Marnie McBride was now 11 hours and more beyond her 11 years, soon to become older and much, much wiser. If you are just toys, at least you're cleaned up now. Awake, for I am your master. What do 
you command, O oh, master? Hey, I'm asking the questions, right? So, who are you? <clears throat> With due deference and respect, master, we might well ask you the same question. Are you the chosen one? What's the chosen one? That's for us to know and you to worry about. You're a cheeky little guy, whoever oh. you are. Unhand me! Just says, oh, oh, put me down! No, not until you tell me your names. Don't tell him, Edwin. Ah, so you're Eddie the Eagle, huh? Hmm. And you are? You know, your, uh, your master shirt. And you? Yes, if it's any of your business. I am Wolfgang. I'm not really one of them. Oh? Oh? Yes, actually. <laughs> okay. So I know, like, who you are. But I don't know what you are. <laughs> well, that's simplicity itself. I am an eagle, he is a bear. Don't be smart, Eddie. If I woke you up, I'll bet I can send you back to sleep. <laughs> Stop! <sighs> awake! Awake! Slumbering creatures! Awake! I command you! <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, okay? I didn't mean to, like, hurt your feelings. Strange days, and stranger yet to come. Daydream or madness, Marnie was wise to keep her secret. But there was another who already knew it, without her even knowing. For when the creatures were awakened, someone else was also awakened. Someone desperate to find them. And to find Marnie, too. Senor Toledo. Oh. Ah. Um, uh, Balmoral Hotel, is it, sir? I have an address for you. Very good, sir. Very good. Yes, yes. Be very very careful. Don't shake them. And I'll thank you to address me in a manner that more befits someone of my station, Mr. McTaggart. Feels a bump. Anybody's at home. Uh, uh, your your magnificentness. Apre, les ordeno.
shapeshifter. <gasps> what will we do? We must flee. Huh? Flee. Fly. Fly. Scram. Vamoose. Skedaddle. We have got to get out of here. Have you finished that, then? Oh. Punishment, sweetheart. It's supposed to help you. The school needs to know what stage you're at so they can fit you in with the new curriculum. It's a big day tomorrow. I know it's new and unfamiliar, but... Sorry. Hello? Am I addressing Mr. McBride? Yes. Forgive the intrusion. I'm a collector of antiques. You purchased yesterday some figurines in which I have an especial interest. Yes? Sir, I'd be prepared to pay a handsome price for these little figures, if they are the ones for which I seek. How did you get my number? Well, let's just say we collectors have our tricks of the trade. I'm a busy man, Mr. McBride. Can we do business or not? Look, I, I don't know you, and I don't know where you got my number. And I don't much like the tone of your voice. The figurines were a birthday present. They're not for sale. All right. Not for sale? Not for sale? My tired mate ready the car! Rapido! Rapido it is, Your Excellency! This way, go, come on! <laughs> oh! What do we do now? Didn't you hear our leader? We fly. Well, you fly if you want to, wolf man. The rest of us will just have to climb. Ah! You know your friends in the shoebox. Mind if I take a wee look at them? I, I, I can't do it, Edwin. I, I just can't. Eat. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Onwards to freedom. They were there a minute ago. <laughs> I promise. So they just took the lid off and walked off by themselves, did they? This is such a good idea. <laughs> Rubbish. Ready? One, two, three, and oh, go!
making a bid for freedom. Ah, the great Michael Scott. Little overdressed for the occasion, huh? Your lifetime is over. Your dark days are numbered. In the elevens, I presume. <laughs> My power is your power! Lest you forget, old man. This is my time, not yours. And neither you nor a witless child will stand in my way. From the four elements you were created, and on the day of reckoning to them you shall return. Be gone. Next time on Shoebox Zoo. If we'd stayed in Denver, I would still be in grade school. I wouldn't have to go to this stupid Dumbsville. Now, maybe I was wrong to bring us to Scotland, but we're here now, so let's try it. Denver's like this really cool place. We're students of the great wizard. But how could he be so cruel? Cool?